guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful Ramadan so far. Today's video is gonna be a girl chat video. I asked you guys in my community tab what kind of sit down video you guys wanted and a girl chat won by a landslide. So I'm super excited to be filming this today. I also asked you guys questions over on my community tab and we are gonna be answering the top liked questions and then a couple of other ones that I thought were interesting. We mostly have like motherhood, marriage, um, just like kind of like life in general questions so I'm super excited to dive in the first question is what is something you feel like younger the younger generation of Muslim girls need to know just thinking back to the way I was growing up I feel like I would tell myself to live my life to please God and not live my life to please other people and I feel like even more so nowadays young girls are so just engrossed in social media and they might be comparing themselves to other people that they see online and feeling bad about themselves and that honestly just like really makes me so sad thinking about that and especially now that I have a daughter I never want her to feel less than looking at other people online because now that I do this for a living I see that it's like what you see online is not always what is going on behind the scenes. A lot of things are staged, a lot of things make people look happier or more beautiful than they are in person. And I would say that don't compare yourself to anyone that you see online. Compare yourself to the person that you were yesterday and build upon that and know that you are living your life to please God and no one else. What's the most beautiful thing about marriage and what has surprised you the most? This is one that got one of the most likes. So I will go ahead and answer this one, even though I feel like this is so cliche. One of the most beautiful things about marriage is just having like your person and just knowing that you have the full support and love and friendship in that person that you can count on every single day. The thing that surprised me the most about marriage, I guess, is just the fact that like Omar and I knew each other so well before we got married. Like we were together for like, what, like seven years or so before we actually moved in together and got married. So I felt like I knew him like inside and out, which I did, but you just like get on like a deeper level um, after you get married. And I just feel like you get to know them even more. Like, I don't know if that makes any sense, but you just really get on like a deeper connection after you get married and it's really wonderful. Next question is, have you ever experienced postpartum depression? And thankfully, I did not um, experience postpartum de depression, but I did experience the baby blues. But I wanted to answer this question because I wanted to normalize that women, so many women go through postpartum depression and it is so important that you know it's okay to seek help for that. The baby blues is you know, similar symptoms to postpartum depression where you're like excessively crying and you just have all these sad feelings. Um, mine were always being sad that Elena was growing up. I would just look at my like five day old baby and think that, oh my God, she's already getting bigger. And then I would just start bawling for like no reason. Thankfully after the two week mark, those feelings really subsided and I started feeling more like myself. But if you're feeling sad or having like a depressed mood weeks and weeks after you deliver your baby and and it's affecting the way that you're bonding with your baby, you're withdrawing from friends and family, you're just feeling helpless, hopeless. That is nothing to be ashamed of and it's not your fault and it's something that you can get help with. So I just wanted to mention this, if it's therapy, if it's medication, like you should not have any reservations in getting help for yourself. Postpartum depression is actually very serious because it can lead to feelings of hurting yourself or even your baby. So just making sure that you are getting help is really, really important. What's the most beautiful thing about being a mother and what are the things you have learned about motherhood? There are so many beautiful things about motherhood and there's literally so many things that I've learned like literally learning every single day but if I was to choose one thing that I guess would be like the most beautiful thing is just watching like this little tiny being that's just like a blank slate who like knows nothing just learn every day and develop new skills and grow and it's just subhanAllah it is so amazing to just see growth in your newborn baby and now my baby is a toddler and now I'm gonna cry. As far as like what I've learned about motherhood I'm literally learning something every single day. I've learned that it's 
ever evolving and like ever changing. The struggles that we went through with Elena when she was a newborn with like the sleepless nights and you know trying to figure out breastfeeding and all of that stuff, that was just a season and you move on from that but then you go into new challenges that you have to kind of like adapt and learn and right now our thing is trying to figure out how to best entertain her and how to make sure she's learning we're getting to the stage where she's starting to throw tantrums and do we discipline how do you start disciplining like there's just always new things that you're gonna have to deal with as a mom i'm still learning and i definitely don't know it all <laughs> how do you balance motherhood of a newborn and taking care of yourself and looking good for your husband so i wanted to answer this one because this is not possible, girl. Like, you just need to worry about surviving. Like newborn stage is all about survival mode, I feel like, and just snuggling your baby and just enjoying that time as much as you can, even though it is a, still a very difficult time and not feeling guilty about not getting dressed up every day. I promise you that is not the norm. Like most people during the newborn phase are not getting dressed up and trying to look all good for themselves and their husband. Like we are just trying to, <laughs> Just try to make it through the day and keep our babies and ourselves alive. It will pass and you will get to the point where you're able to spend more time on yourself. So don't put so much pressure on yourself to like get dressed up and look good every day because I promise you when you look back on that newborn stage, you are not going to look back and think, oh, I wish I would have like done my makeup more or gotten dressed more during the day. You're gonna think about all those amazing sweet little baby snuggles and just making memories with you and your husband and I promise you it will go by so fast and things will get better. How to not compare yourself and not lose hope when wanting to get married but feeling like you will never get to experience it while others do and feel like you're missing out. This really just breaks my heart. I feel like a lot of girls are going through this. I know several girls um, personally who feel this way and the best advice that I can give you is to just put all of that anxiety and stress and everything that you have in God's hands because he is the one that's in control fully. He is the one who already has your, the trajectory of your life planned out and if you just leave it up to him then he will take care of everything. The way I think about it, I don't feel like you should just like sit at home and just wait for things to happen because that's not really how anything in life works, right? I mean, if you were studying for a test, you would need to make sure that you were actually studying instead of just praying that you were going to make an A on the test. So I feel like just making sure that you're putting yourself out there, making sure all your friends and family know that you're searching for a husband, um, getting on the dating apps if you need to. At the end of the day, like putting yourself out there is all that you can do and you just have to put all of that stress and all of that uncertainty that you're feeling in God's hands and he will take care of you and I just feel like having faith is just just the best advice that I can give you. How do you handle conflict with Omar in the heat of the moment and how long does it take you to overcome sadness and anger afterward? I had to ask Omar about this question earlier to see like what I actually do because <laughs> I forgot how I handle conflict with him and he said that I shut down and it's really hard to like talk to me so I guess that's not a good trait because I need to be able to be open and talk about my feelings. And it takes me a while to get over something because I know that even after like we make up and you know things are fine again, I still can't be like 100% like myself because I'm still feeling those feelings. So sometimes it takes me like half a day or like a full day to like really be myself again. And maybe I should change that. <laughs> Maybe I should be better, but that's just how I am. Does motherhood ever feel lonely? And yes, especially because I don't really have that many friends that have babies. I do have one friend, but she lives in Houston, so I don't see her very often. And then actually now Omar's sister just had her baby, so I've been able to relate to her a lot more recently. Just being able to like talk about like the stages she's going through and like being able to like give her advice and stuff. My life is just completely revolved around my baby and the stages she's going through and that's just my entire life. Sometimes I feel like I can't relate to others and not in the stage of life that they're going through right now. I feel like it's really important to have mommy friends even though I really don't have that many around me. How do you maintain your individuality now that you have a husband and a baby? I would say that my life pretty much revolves around Elena but doesn't really revolve much around Omar. <laughs> 
sorry, Omar. I feel like Omar has his individuality too, just because like he's always planning things with his friends or like he has the things that he likes to do. I feel like most of my individuality comes from my job to be 100% honest. Like I feel like if I didn't have this community with you guys, I probably wouldn't put as much effort into maintaining my individuality in that way because I like have goals with like my career and I continue to work on those every week but as far as like my own like hobbies and interests and stuff I really am lacking in those to be honest like I do have yoga that I go to but other than that like my world outside of my job really just revolves around my daughter. I can see how you can really lose yourself as a mom. This one was a highly asked or a highly liked question. When you're married, do you have to make sure you're waxed or shaved all the time? I would say no, you do not. That should be like a very personal thing. Like if you want to be waxed and shaved all the time, then do that. But if you don't, then I feel like it's not right for your man to like make you feel like you're not beautiful if you don't shave. I did ask Omar like what he thought about this like from a man's perspective and he said that the mature men that he knows like they wouldn't care so it's more likely that they're probably immature if they are expecting you to shave and wax every single day. I don't know I feel like if you have a very mature loving spouse then they will not care. Men are not really probably worried about that when they want something else. <laughs> How do you help support your partner during a difficult time? For example, when he deals with sadness, anger, being hopeless, etc. I thought this was a good one because a lot of times I feel like men are just like us. Like sometimes we just need to vent and tell people how we're feeling without someone needing to fix the situation or, you know, sometimes we just feel like we need to say how we're feeling and have someone validate our feelings and I feel like it should be the same way that we support our men and if they're ever going through a hard time and they're explaining to you like why they're frustrated and why they're upset I feel like it's really important to just be a safe space for them to be able to vent and show their emotions without being judged and just being that support system for them and not necessarily thinking that you're going to be able to fix everything that they're upset about, but just showing them that it's okay to feel those feelings, that you are there to support them in whatever way that you can. Okay, this one's kind of a long question, but basically this girl is asking why should people have kids? And to give some rational reasons other than the cliche ones as why people should have kids, can you convince someone logically to become a parent who doesn't find any happiness with the thought of having kids. I thought I'd answer this just because if you don't wanna have kids, then there's nothing wrong with that, you know? I feel like maybe in our cultures and our society, we're just like expected. That is just the circle of life and you're just expected to have kids and that is, you know, everyone's story when that's not what everyone wants to do. And I feel like that's completely okay. And I don't feel like someone needs to be convinced to have kids if they don't want to have kids. But on the other hand, I will say that before I had Elena I think I told you guys before but I was never one to have like baby fever I never really enjoyed being around kids I mean not that I don't like kids but just being around other people's kids was not exciting to me I guess after I had Elena my entire perspective changed it's like an instinct that it's like your baby and you just are so in love and it's just completely different and you'll never know what that feels like until you have your own baby what has been the thing you struggle the most with being a content creator and I feel like you probably know this because I've mentioned this in several videos but it's definitely just the negative comments and it's not even just like people telling me oh like you're ugly or just like superficial stuff like I don't like your the way you do your hijab or I don't know stupid stuff like that it's more of like the comments that point out things about myself that I am already hard about myself about like I'm already so hard on myself as it is. So whenever I see a comment shaming me for something that I'm already insecure about, that's when I really just start spiraling, thinking like, oh my gosh, everyone hates me. I'm a terrible person. I just get into this really bad mindset whenever I start reading comments that are like shaming me for things. When it's hard because I know there's so many thousands of you guys who are so supportive and kind. It's just, I guess, human nature to just focus on those negative things, but I'm working on it, you guys. And yeah, I just try to always remind myself that most of you guys are so kind and supportive and 
that is why I continue to do what I do. What do you think are the most important lessons to teach your daughter and children in general about Islam? I have a daughter around the same age as yours, by the way. I worry about her growing up in a Western country. I was lucky enough to grow up in the Middle East where religion and Islam were normalized as part of the culture. I really wanted to answer this one because I kind of have a little bit of a, not a different perspective, on how I want to go about teaching my daughter, but I've just seen a lot of parents lead with like the fear tactic when it comes to Islam. Oh, if you don't listen to your mom, Allah is gonna be angry with you or things like that. And of course we should fear God, but the way that I wanna go about it is teaching Elena that God loves her more than anyone loves her and that if she ever has any issues or problems to always like run to him first to seek guidance and lead with God's love rather than how angry Allah is going to be with her. And as far as being worried about your daughter living in a western country and growing up here, obviously I grew up in the US and from what I've learned as long as the people around her with the most influence, like her parents, her family, are giving a really great example, that is what is going to really influence her the most rather than the society that she grows up around. And this is just proven to me because I know people in Muslim countries who like their religion was normalized in society and they're not necessarily better Muslims or anything like that. So it really just depends on the environment that you create for your family and um, just that influence that you directly give your daughter. What are some tips you can give other full-time working moms? Don't put so much pressure on yourself and feeling like you have to do it all because I promise you guys, and I say this all the time, but you cannot do it all and you guys don't even get to see how much help I have behind the scenes. If I was to try to like cook and clean and take care of myself and take care of my daughter and work and do all the things behind the scenes that this job entails, I would drive myself insane and I just am so grateful for the amount of help that I have and if you can't get help then be easy on yourself and know that the house is it's okay if it's a mess and it's okay if I don't please every single person as long as I'm doing what's best for me and my family how honest are you with the women in your life about difficulties as a couple what is the line to draw between getting support and privacy and this one got like 300 likes I think it's something that a lot of us deal with because to be honest whenever you have an argument with your husband, one of the first things that you wanna do is go talk to someone about it, especially like your sisters or your family or whatever. But I really try to avoid this just because I know that my family has like my best interest at heart. I know that if I was to go to my family with an argument that me and Omar had, my dad would just get all upset and just, you know, go to my defense. If it's not something that is really necessary for other people to come in and get involved, then it's just not necessary for them to even know about it because I never want them to have negative feelings about Omar when it's just something that me and him need to like work out ourselves. That gives the opportunity for you to like talk to your spouse about it and work through those problems rather than going to other people when that's not going to solve anything. It might just make you feel better to vent, but it's not actually going to fix the situation or, you know, help you work through the argument that you're having with your spouse. In my opinion, I would just avoid getting anyone else involved in any of those little arguments unless it's like something that's actually serious. This one got a lot of likes too. How do you deal with Islamophobia and racism considering the fact that you live in Texas? Texas is just kind of stereotyped for being very Islamophobic and having a lot of racist people, which I'm sure there are those people here. But in my personal experience, I have just rarely ever run into those kind of people. I think I shared with you guys of my one experience with this man that told me I need to go back to my country. That was like so many years ago. I think I talked about that in my hijab story video. But that was literally the only time I'd ever experienced something like that. And I have experienced nothing but kindness and openness and love from people in my area. And that just may be like the town that I live in, I'm not sure, but I'm really, really blessed to have like a positive experience in Texas. Do you ever feel insecure with Omar such as not being a good enough wife? If so, how do you get over those feelings? Do you ask him for validation to move past those doubts? Trying to get past this myself. So many of us can honestly relate to this because I was thinking about it because I actually have asked Omar several times in the past, like, am I, do am I a good wife? Like, am I doing a good job? Those kind of questions. And I think it stems from the fact that my mom and 
Omar's mom even came from that generation where the wife stays home, cooks, cleans, take care of the kid, takes care of the kids, and then takes care of her husband when he comes home from work. And it's just a very different dynamic than Omar and I have because we both always work. We both kind of share responsibilities, and it's not that typical wife take care of the husband type of relationship even though i do try my best to do those things for him and cook for him and take care of him sometimes it can be easy to feel like i'm not doing enough in this day and age a lot of things are changing and that includes like the dynamic between a lot of husbands and wives since a lot of us both work um, and i feel, feel like a lot of times it's just like that team effort and just making sure that you're both meeting each other's needs i feel like this is just something that a lot of women can relate to that was all the questions thank you guys so much for sending those in make sure to like this video if you guys like girl chats if you guys want me to make more of them and subscribe if you haven't already and i will see y'all in my next video bye